EPA and WA Meteorologist Bobby Marchant here with your outlook for July 6th, 2021. Today's video forecast is sponsored by the Reading Fight and Fills, who are back in town uh, to take on the Harrisburg Senators at First Energy Stadium tonight at 7.05. It is the first of a six-game series, six-game homestand. Actually, the homestand is going to go a little bit longer than that. We have two straight weeks of home games, but this is uh, the first six-game series. Starts against the Harrisburg Senators tonight at 7.05. You get your tickets at rfills.com. Uh, today, we have very hot conditions across the region, so the next couple of days, as a matter of fact, we have this 90 to 95 degree range uh, from north to south, and uh, this is going to be a, a pretty hot go out at the next couple of days. We have thunderstorms listed both days, and today's thunderstorms are kind of in question a little bit of where exactly uh, they they venture and, and how far south they go, and also the severity of some of these storms, uh, because the shear values are not very good. The area of low pressure that's driving this is up here in southeastern Canada. So we are far removed from the area of best forcing. So if you don't have a lot of shear, which is typically you want to see between 25 and 30 knots or greater of shear, and we're seeing some values here that are single digits, teens, uh, that's not very good. So that means that the storm cannot sustain itself over a long period of time, even though the NAM is suggesting you're going to have a congealed line going. Uh, but the pulsing, the severe part of the storm, so that there's little parts of a, of a line that would be severe and some that's not. So you might have some that pulse up and become severe, but they will not be able to sustain themselves. They end up co collapsing uh, and choking themselves out, basically, of their own rain-cooled updrafts that are running out in front of the storm. So I think it's what you're dealing a lot with today. And the global models are not, and have not, and still are not thrilled with activity today. This is later this evening, and you see very little in the way of activity. But let's get over the NAM high res feature simulated radar. It's a different story. The short range models are showing a lot different of a picture. The convective allowing models are a lot more interested in what's going on today. And we will certainly have a very hot and humid atmosphere. So whenever you have a trigger somewhat, somewhat of a trigger in the vicinity, coupled with very hot temperatures and high dew points, that's usually a recipe for storms. So we're kind of leaning toward the storm idea rather than not, okay? So, because uh, it doesn't, it's almost like lighting a match off in a fireworks factory. I mean, it's, you know, uh, you, you can have some serious problems here. Uh, and convection is not hard to get in this this kind of uh, atmospheric uh, conditions. So we have, this is late afternoon. This is 4 p.m. where I'm starting off this radar. And I do think that the best corridor for severe storms, if you're going to have severe storms today, I'll stop this here so I can draw is going to be right in here. All right, I'm just highlighting my our coverage area here. It does extend further northeast than this, but that's not our area. So this area right in here, north, northeast PA, northern New Jersey, I think you have the best shot at any severe weather today, and that's where the best shear is. Even though it's not that great, it's still better than areas southwest of there. Uh, and I do think you're going to get thunderstorms further, further west and southwest of there, but probably sub-severe for the most part. Okay, so... Uh, I like where the SBC has their outline today, and I see where they're going with that. And the simulated radar shows some pretty hefty storms going across northeast PA and northern New Jersey, especially over by uh, the New York City area, because, again, you're closer to the forcing there. Uh, but it does keep this line going here all the way through the evening. This is 8 o'clock here, and here's 9. You can see a pretty solid line still going here, but that does not mean that this is going to be severe just because the radar reflectivity is showing these bright reds, Okay. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how that works out, but I wouldn't expect a lot if you're pretty far west here. This should be just more garden variety, uh, and you could have a tremendous amount of lightning with any of these because the instability is going to be off the, through the roof today. I mean, we're going to have a, a very soupy environment, so that could certainly produce a tremendous amount of lightning, but lightning is not a severe parameter as defined by the National Weather Service. It is winds 50, 58 miles per hour greater or one inch hail or larger, and I think the only area you're going to see that for the most part, uh, is getting that corridor here that I just drew before. All right, now it doesn't mean you can't get something out of that, outside of that window, but the it's, the probability is a lot higher in that corridor I drew, okay? And that's basically where the SPC has it today, so I agree with that assessment. And then going forward here to Wednesday, we have a prefrontal trough that may make uh, its way through the region, give us some more chances for scattered thunderstorms. And this might involve more of the interior in terms of... Uh, Getting some stronger storms here on Wednesday as well. At least a marginal risk was up here at the time the video was recorded for Wednesday. Uh, so there will be some more activity here on Wednesday too. This can be the start of several days here until we get a cold front on, on Thursday to try to uh, push through, or it's going to attempt to anyway, 
and um, it will have scattered thunderstorms straight through Thursday, maybe even Friday yet, uh, before this is finally we finally get a break in the action toward the weekend. Now, the next thing we're going to take a look at here is, uh, besides all these frontal boundaries I'm talking about, is is Tropical Storm Elsa. Elsa is going to make landfall somewhere here in the Big Bend of Florida, most likely, and uh, continue up the coast. And you can see that here. Here's the prefrontal trough noise here on Wednesday that gives us our thunderstorms. Here's Elsa already made landfall in the Big Bend, moving uh, across Georgia and then the Carolinas. Uh, here's the cold front Thursday that gives us more scattered showers and thunderstorms. But Elsa's moving across the Carolinas here at this point later on Thursday. And then it gets awfully close, if not uh, passing over our far southeastern coastal sections. I mentioned this in a long range Friday. We were watching Elsa, and this is something that we are going to keep an eye on, that we could have some fringe impacts at the very least for places like Ocean City, Maryland, all the way up to Sandy Hook. And the trend has been to push us a little bit further west, kind of maybe going right over the Chesapeake Bay area and uh, the Delmarva, which would bring some rain with it overnight, Thursday night into early Friday morning until this passes by. And there also could be some wind gusts at this point too, 40 miles per hour in some of these cases. I think the biggest case, the biggest problem here with the shore points here is going to be the uh, both coastal flooding and the, uh, you know, the higher rough surf, the higher surf. And uh, so that's what we're going to watch out here for the next couple of days here just to see how this tracks because that could impact those things most prominently. But wind is probably going to be capped at about 40 miles per hour for the gusts. That's not the big issue. The rain is going to be uh, heavy. For areas near the nearest the coast and the further inland you get, it gets less. But if this tracks a little bit further west, we could have uh, some more rain impacts that could bring a quick one, two inches of rain, even though it's only going to be raining uh, for, you know, six to eight hours. All right. Here's where it is out here in the re I actually went over Cuba today and has, has reemerged over the waters here. It's going to be affecting the Keys and then all the way up the west coast of Florida before it makes landfall somewhere up here. And then after Hurricane Center track does just that takes this as a tropical storm and then you see the d's here that's the tropical depression is expected at that point as it makes its way up to our area very late thursday that could give us some impacts from that as well uh, at least the farther southeast you go uh, there's also a question about how far northwest this goes but even if it does it's more like a rain issue for the interior not really wind so much maybe some wind gusts but not really notable i think uh, as you get down by the shore points that's when you get your wind gusts to 40. Uh, maybe even isolated 45 if this thing's still still kind of intact here. Uh, but it's going to be a shorter duration for that. I think the major, major impacts are going to be uh, coastal flooding and rough surf and seas, high wave heights, those that kind of thing, uh, until this leaves here on Friday morning. So we'll keep an eye on that this week. That is going to be our first threat from any tropical system, of course, this season. And, uh, you know, it might be several down the pipeline. We have no idea here at this point, but it's still early in the season yet. So I would expect at least something uh, for the rest of the way here. And then uh, still an isolated uh, thunderstorm possible here on Friday. Then it looks like Saturday wants to clear out. Saturday's your day clears out a little bit and you uh, get the partly cloudy skies here for at least one day. And then we have another cold front making its way toward the region. It can bring more scattered showers and thunderstorms in the Sunday-Monday time frame of next week. But it does look like that temperatures are going to be Kind of like near to slightly above average after we get past it's Wednesday. Wednesday is going to it's going to drop down after Wednesday to Thursday. We're going to drop back down to the kind of mid to upper 80s or thereabout, and then uh, it, we kind of remain that way straight through the weekend. So it's not going to drop off. And we're going to get real cold or anything like that. Uh, it looks like we're going to have several days that are going to kind of like near to slightly but very slightly above average for a couple days straight through the weekend after this point. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for July 6, 2021. Have a great Tuesday.